uh, Avalanche, eight year. So satisfying to watch. Like if, if you ever see videos of, of people like skiing or whatever, and there's an avalanche behind them, the way the snow just like rolls down the mountain. It's so, I wish those videos were longer. It's also like super underestimated. Like it seems like it's something that you could just like walk off like, oh, it just snow, right? But yeah, no, you'd be lucky to make it out alive. It's also a reminder of like, yeah, nature's deadly, but it's also really delicate. It's fragile. And like human beings can cause avalanches literally just by being loud. Like we, we have so much control over nature yet so little at the same time. It's beautiful, A tier. Blizzards, yeah, this shit is mad annoying. It's fun when you're rich because you can set up solar panels and you can get generators and then you can have a snowmobile, shit like that, right? And you could just like sled around on the roads like Casey Neistat in New York. It's actually really fun living in a Southern state because whenever there's heavy snow, the like whole world becomes happy for a few days. That's what it seems like. Like everyone puts their differences aside to go play in the snow. And since COVID, everyone's been such a pussy. But, you know, if it snows heavy again, watch. Hella kids are going to be outside, like in the streets. And, and everyone's going to like feel like trusting each other. And people in the North just don't get it. They're like, I don't get what the big deal is. They do. They, they, know, they know that like when you only experience this kind of thing, you know, every few years or so, once every few years, it, it's a big thing. But they try to act cool and they're like, oh, I don't really get it. And uh, I mean, that's stupid on their part to try to act cool, like as if it's as if it's cool to be desensitized to things that make you happy. But yeah, if you're broke and there's a blizzard, then like you're fucked. You know, the pipes under your home could burst. You could lose electricity. Like people died. Hell, people died in the snowstorms in Texas a few years ago. But, you know, it does give you an excuse to hug people for warmth. So that's nice and all. So all in all, it's, it's a decent reminder of the fact that we're at the mercy of nature. And no matter what you think will happen, you look at history. The power went out in Texas. The government did not send trucks of food and drop cases of water to them. They don't give a fuck. If you really want to be ready for these things, you got to be ready. Your, you got to get ready yourself. And if you got money like that, most blizzards are a totally conquerable part of nature. So I'm going to put it in C for conquerable. But I always wondered, like, if there's a definition of a hurricane, does that also include when you fill up the sink all the way and then drain it and let the water spiral down? Because it's kind of the same thing. It's just an extremely downsized version. Some hurricanes are kind of cool. It's cool that they're all given names. There's a lot of cool philosophy uh, associated with like reaching the eye of the storm and things like that. Lots of cool stories to be told. I'm gonna put it in B tier. Droughts, these things fucking suck. They're, they're, they're really just the worst. It destroys everything, like all biodiversity. Um, well, most of it, depending on the drought, I guess, and how severe it is, but it's just another part of nature. It also makes for a lot of cool places to explore, but it never makes for a cool place to live. I won't put it in F tier actually. Earthquakes are the most overrated natural disaster of all time. Like bro, just go stand outside where there's nothing above you to crush you. Oh, you can't get out of your skyscraper in time? Bro, don't live in a skyscraper. Literally cheaper and safer. And also like there's no fun after an earthquake. Like even when it droughts, at least there's like a story to be told. Like it's like a, it's like Rango, you know, like the apocalypse. And bro, every guy my age has thought about like what it would be like during a zombie apocalypse. It's like, you would think that after an earthquake, there would be some like cool apocalypse type shit where like everyone's trying to like fend for themselves and they do all these zombie apocalypse strats and it would be like the last of us, right? Where everyone's got factions and they set up booby traps and shit like that, right? But nope, everyone just like, you know, people in different countries just send their thoughts and prayers on Twitter and the government aid kicks in and within a couple years, they're back up and running. Boring F tier. Floods are also just like blizzards in that if you're rich, you can manage. In fact, you can actually thrive. All the more reason to get rich, but there isn't really that many ways to have fun in a flood. And it also doesn't really matter how rich you are. There's some things that you are unable to be saved in a flood, like in a blizzard, you know, you can keep your home safe and warm enough with enough energy and enough uh, fire running and enough fuel or whatever. But in a bad flood, like your home is fucked. It doesn't matter what you do. You, there's no saving it. So yeah, I'm gonna put it in D tier. Forest fires are essential. There's thousands of forest fires happening at any given moment somewhere in the world. It's a natural occurrence. And what happens when people meddle with nature and prevent forest fires? California happens. And people have to have controlled burns to make up for the fact that there's no natural forest fires because we stopped them all. 
it's like it's the potato assembly line uh, analogy it's like uh customers didn't like getting clean potatoes because it didn't feel as authentic so they put it back on the assembly line to apply more dirt to it so they remove the dirt and then they reapply the dirt and forest fires are the same things controlled burns are the same things like how about just i don't know stop fucking with nature they're important and it's a pretty good example of npc behavior like oh, we need to stop forest fires. We need to stop deforestation. We need to, st it's like people saying we need to, we need to, we need to, when they're just convinced of bullshit. Like, bro, there's literally more trees on earth today than there ever have been in human history. Like, shut the fuck up. B tier. I just played Firewatch uh, a while back too. Beautiful game, overrated as fuck. Very poorly programmed. Um, is that, that's just rain or sleet? I have no idea. It looks like a, looks like a flood to me, but... I don't, I'm gonna put it in F tier. Meteor impact. This one's kind of iffy. It really depends on how big the meteor is. Cause like, it could either be the coolest light show we've ever seen, or it could be the end of the species. Or maybe an alien race hitches a ride and you know, it turns into the alien invasion. Totally different natural disaster. That would be pretty cool. So yeah, this one's kind of a, a toss up for me. I'm gonna go C tier actually. Actually, alien invasion is too good to pass up. I'm putting it in B tier. Cause, cause like, think about it. First of all, the robot invasion is already happening, okay? The zombie invasion would be way cooler, but if the robot invasion happens, which it is, then the zombie invasion will be easily thwarted, and there's no chance of the zombies winning or even standing a chance, you know? But something to, like, really fuck with the robots? Who knows? It could be another organism from outer space. Like, chances are that our first alien encounter will probably be some like microorganism, you know, that comes and starts a global pandemic, like a real one. Yeah, not like a, you know, what people might call a pandemic, you know, not during a time of like record breaking growing populations, but you know, like a real pandemic where the population stops growing or even starts to decline. God tier survivalists might like rise to the occasion for that one. Who knows, it could be cool. Who, who knows what kind of stories might, might emerge out of it. I think B tier is solid. Sinkholes. Um, Look, this one's just not fair. Like, this is the universe just striking you down. But, you know, if you just so happen to be right outside of the sinkhole, or you barely make it out alive, like, that adrenaline's gotta be unmatched. It'll probably also give you PTSD, but, um, that's neither here nor there. I get, okay, if you were to describe, if you were to, like, compare the world to, like, a human, right? Like, a volcanic eruption is, like, a heart attack, and then a sinkhole is, like, a brain aneurysm right? There's no way to predict it. Um, there's nothing you could do to prevent it. And you have to, like, the only way you can really stop it is you have to look everywhere all the time, constantly. Like, it's just not feasible. It's not a fun one. And there's no good ending at the end of it. F tier. Tornadoes. I'm actually not so sure anymore what causes tornadoes. Like, if it's as simple as, like, a giant warm air mass meets a giant cold air mass, and then the difference in pressure from the top to the bottom causes like a spiral or whatever. But I mean, like, if that's the case, then why are there so many places that don't have any tornadoes? Like when I was playing Firewatch, the game takes place in Wyoming and apparently there's no tornadoes there, or at least that's what Delilah mentioned in the game. But that seemed like a spot with like some really cold nights and some really hot days. If that's not the criteria for different, very strong temperature air masses colliding with each other, and I don't really know what is. And I know, okay, a lot of people that are that might be watching this are not like viewers of mine. Um, so you don't know like how to, you know, actually have fun on the internet. And so you might be like, oh, just look it up. I know I could look up whatever causes tornadoes and I could just figure it out. But where's the fun in that? I like to learn, not to know, okay? I'm tired of being a know-it-all. I want to be ignorant for once. There's no fun in science if you could just look everything up. And that, there's no fun in anything if you could just look everything up. That's literally what's causing games to be boring is people going like, man, I can't pass this part in this game. Let me not try anything. Let me just look up a tutorial. It's literally what ruins these kinds of games. Video games and IRL games like playing the game of science and all this stuff of just, oh yeah, I'll just look everything up rather than doing the experiments myself. But yeah, maybe one day I'll, I'll think about it a bit more and I might figure out some cool idea on how tornadoes form, but... In the meantime, it's it's really interesting, it's mysterious, it's unpredictable, uh, it's super cool, and it's surprisingly anthropomorphizable, if that's a word. I'm gonna put it in S tier. Tsunamis, so they're caused by earthquakes and they result in floods. So I'm gonna put them in D tier. And volcanoes, 
let's just get this one out of the way, bro. Lava is the coolest shit ever. And it's kind of weird how we all played the floor as lava when we were little, despite like never knowing the other people also played it. And I guess it just happens when you grow up playing video games. Like, it, it, like there's, there's an archetype to it. There's a story. It's like lava is like the liquid of the villainous side of nature. It's, it's lava is evil water. That's what it is. Like water is blue, lava is red. Water is cold, lava is hot, you know? It really makes the stories like so much more fun to watch and it's so mysterious and it's also super devastating and you know, the sound that it makes and it's so like, it's so mesmerizing to watch. Like there was those live streams of like people just watching like 10,000 viewers just watching like lava flow, <laughs> flow into the ocean and stuff like that. And you know, it was so fun making like that baking soda uh, volcano as a kid. It's just fun, dude. It's the ultimate way to die, jumping into a volcano. It's S here. And I guess they forgot to include CMEs, which are coronal mass ejections, solar flares, sending an EMP towards Earth. If it's powerful enough, it could, you know, disrupt like technology on like a multi-trillion dollar scale. It's unlikely, but it's still way more likely than any kind of like asteroid or like crazy volcanic explosion, you know? Solar flares come close to hitting the Earth all the time. Like, no, but like multiple times in a generation. And if you compare that to like the amount of time, like the a Krakatawa type volcanic explosion only really happens like, really only like once, it, once like in human history so far, you know? And they also didn't include gamma ray bursts, which uh, same sort of thing, stripping away the ozone, stripping away the, uh, 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 what's it called? Magnetic fields. Um, they didn't include, oh wait, the, I mean, I guess they included one thing from outer space, but yeah, there's a lot of space stuff that, um, are natural disasters that are really potentially devastating, but, um, unlikely. They also didn't include the Skinwalker invasion, so, uh, yeah, I guess they can't all be winners.